Working with dates is super important in Power BI, especially if you want to do things like year-to-date calculations or month-over-month -month change, etc. So we're going to go through in this video everything to do with dates in Power BI, including some of the little stuff that's easy to forget. So date table is the big one, so we're going to look at how to do that. Then we're going to look at how to market as a date table, then how to sort by column, create relationships, including inactive relationships, uh, stuff that we're coming later in the video, how to hide the columns that you don't need, which you should always do for good practice, disabling auto date time. And then we're going to deal with other aspects at the year level, and then how to build a Power Query date table from scratch. So if you want to jump forward to a certain aspect of this video, you can click on the chapters to help you there. So my name is David Benheim, and I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Office, then I'm covering on my channel, so subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. So let's first see what you can do with your proper date set up the right way. You can have these kind of time intelligence things where you have, for example, year to date or month to date or something like that, where it goes until the end of December, then it goes back down and starts again. Or you can have month on month change, year on year change, etc. Now these things work the best if you have a proper date table and your proper date arrangement that we're going to cover in this video. But to kick off, let's show how this works. The way that I do it is using a feature called Quick Measures. And if I click on that, and then I can select a calculation. And in Time Intelligence, you have all these year today, quarter today, month today, etc. So let's do a year over year change. It's fairly easy to do. First, you do what you want to calculate. So let's say sales. And I'm going to choose date. You should add this date. Uh, note that if you add another date, it will tell you that it doesn't work. For example, if I add in this date, then it says that it needs to be a primary date column or hierarchies. I'll explain a little bit about that later on, but for now, you need to do it the right way, which is choosing this date. And usually one is what you want because you want every year, not every two years. Press add, then it will create a measure called your year over year. And then you can add that like this. And then I can choose that I wanna see that by year. So let's have a table. It usually makes sense to have a table with these. There we go. And if you want to add these kind of up down arrows, you can click there and choose conditional formatting and icons. I'm not going to go through that in this video, but it's fairly easy to follow the procedures. And there you go. And there you have your year on year value. Similarly, you can change here instead of this one, you can have a year to date. By the way, if you don't have the preview features turned on, you'll see quick measures as a pop up, but it's basically the same. So if I do sales over date again, year to date total, well, let's not do sales. Let's do another one. Let's do fruits and press add. Then here we have fruits year to date as well. And if I add it to this other chart, and let's take off sales year to date. Yeah, there you go. So we'll see that it goes right until the end of the year. And then when it gets to December, it goes back down. Now you can write the measures yourselves. If I click on them, you'll see that they're not the longest measures to write. Uh, if I click on this one, then it says a fairly simple one. And you could have something like if the month is after say May and there's no data in that, then return null, otherwise return this. That's something that I've done in the past to edit this measure. So they are editable. I won't go through if formulas in this. I have another video where I talk about those. Great. All right. So let's get started with how to get this working. So first I'm going to create a date table and I'm just going to use this by copying and pasting some code and I'm going to amend it and show you how to amend it. If you want the code directly, then leave a comment in this video and I can send that to you. So I'm going to go to new query, get data and blank query. So I get the power query editor opening up and I'm going to go to the advanced editor and I've already copied the code. So I'm going to delete this and right click and paste. And then I'm going to press done. As I said, I'll give you the code at the end of this video if it's something you're interested in. So here I have a bunch of columns. We don't need all of these. These are kind of the ones that I find useful. And now we can add certain aspects to it. So for example, here I've got Saturday is five and Sunday is six. So I can go to add column and conditional column. And I can say if day of week equals, or rather is greater than or equal to five, then return weekend, otherwise return weekday. And I'm going to say day type, perfect. So you can add other aspects you want, uh, for example, seasonality, if that's something that's interesting to you or for your organization. But what we're also going to do is look at how to amend the start date and the end date. Now I've set this to start from the 1st of January 2017, uh, which is actually the current year, five years before that on the 1st of January. And the end date is going to be three years from now, the 31st of December on that. So if you do want to amend this using this one that I built, if we go back to the advanced editor, it tells us how to do that. So you can either do it relative by just changing this number here. So if I want to say just minus two and zero, then it will be a much shorter date table that will start on, in, on the 1st of January, 2020, because I'm currently recording this in 2022, and it will end in 2022. There we go. It, it would go up to the end of 2022. If I go to year, you can see those are the ones that's loading. So that's how you do it relative. But if you want to do absolute dates, you can also look at that in the advanced editor. I do have here the instructions to do it, to change relative to date, to change it to fixed replace with equals date, blah, 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 and then type it in. So you need to type in year, month, day, and then the rest just leave as zeros. And so here I can say equals, paste that in. And let's say I want to start in 2018, and I'm going to say one, one, press done. And now if I go to the year filter, it starts in 2018. 
So that's how to do it. The instructions are there in green in the advanced editor for how to do it, depending on what your needs are. As I said, if you are interested in this, then leave a comment and I can send it to you. So next we're going to rename the query. So date table like that and close and apply. So that's these first two done. Next up, we're going to mark as date table, sort by column, create relationships. And these are all pretty quick. So if I go in here and I go to my date table, uh, what I can do is I can click on mark as date table and mark as date table. Then you need to select the date column, press OK. What's very important for these to work is that it needs to be continuous. So there can't be any day that's left blank. Even weekends needs to be there for this to work. So from your start date to your end date, and here I'm going to sort ascending. This is my, my first date. There needs to be not a single date that is left out. Every row needs to be a date in between that. And you need these in order to do time intelligence calculations that we'll see later. If you mark as a date table, you get this. And you need to choose the date column, the column that has no duplicates and is continuous in order to get that to work. So next, let's create some relationships. So over here, we have our date table like this. What you need to do is you need to, to drag and drop. So from concert data to date, that will work. And then I have this one to many relationship, which is usually what I want. Now in this example, I actually have two date columns, the sale date and the expiry date. So what you can do is you can drag the sale date to this one, and that will be the primary relationship. And then I'm going to drag expiry date to date, and this will be the inactive relationship. Now these are showing me this kind of relationship, which is a one-to-one -one relationship. Uh, those are actually the ones you shouldn't use because uh, it happens because there are unique elements in both of the tables. In this case, it doesn't matter too much, but if we need to add more data and then that data means they're non-unique rows, then it will not work. So to do that, you can double click it and you can choose many to one in this case, because this is the start, the fruit data to that one there and filter direction, choose a single. So if it was the other way around, if this was date table and this was fruit data, then you would choose the opposite. But we want to get the one side on here. Do the same here. So those are relationships. Note that for this, this gets trickier because here I just have data at the year level. So I won't be able to relate even year to year because there's no unique values on any of them. It will tell me it needs to be many to many, which is just not what you want to do generally inside Power BI. So I'm going to create a new page and here let's make some visuals. So I've got sales. I'm going to do that by date. Always choose the date from this one, the one you marked like that. And that's all good. That's a line chart and that's showing me in the right way. But you know what I'm going to do instead? Let's say I want it by month. I'm going to do sales and I'm going to do that by month like this. And this isn't particularly good because, I mean, firstly, there's a lot of blanks. Secondly, these are showing me issues here. So it's not sorting in the way that I want. It's going January, March, August, September, June, July. So if I go here and I saw access and I go to month, now it's showing me September 18, and September 19, just not the order that I want either. So it's not quite worked. And let's deal with that. So firstly, to figure out why the blanks are happening, what we need to do is I need to go to the date column here and see what the earliest is. And here it starts in 2016. And it goes up to, if I resort it, 2019. Let's do that for the other ones as well and just check that we are going to capture everything. So if I go to expiry date, this is 21 and 22. And sale date is similar, 21, 22. And next, let's go for targets. And let's see what our year is. And this is just going to be not a sum, but don't summarize. We get 17, 18, 19. So we need to get the minimum, which is 2016, then it should work. So I'm going to go back in here. If I go to date table and start date, I'm going to change this to 16 and close and apply. And there we go. And now I've fixed that problem, but I haven't fixed this thing. So that's because you need to tell Power BI how to sort this rather than year like that. You need to tell it what aspect to do to sort it. So best if you go to this view, although you don't have to, then the date table, you should take the month. This is the column where I have three characters for the month and then a dash and then two characters for the year. I think this is the most useful and efficient way of showing this. And it's understandable regardless of which country you're in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and this icon is sort by column. And then I want to sort by something that's the same granularity level, which is year, month, number, this one. Now, if I go back here, I can see that now it's showing me in the right way. I mean, it's the opposite direction, but if I go to sort ascending, Jan, Feb, March, April, perfect. So do that for the other ones. And i am also got month name and I want to sort that by month number. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to sort by month number. Let me do the wrong one and show you that it doesn't work. So there needs to be the same granularity level. That means every time where it says Jan here, there needs to be the same num the same value here. In this case, it's zero one, which it usually would be, but it can't have that this Jan is zero one and this Jan is zero two, for example, that just won't work. So here I'm going to say sort by month number, that one. And then I'm going to click on this one and sort that by day of week. There we go. 
And if you have more, then you would do it more like that. But actually, now that we've done that, these columns that I just used to sort by are not really very important. So what I can do is I can click on it, on it and I can hide it. So month num, that means I'm going to hide it. And I'm going to do the same here. Year month num, that I can hide. And there are other ways to hide it as well. For example, I can click on this and right click and choose to hide and report view. If it's hidden, it will show you this icon, but if you go to the report view, this one, then it won't show them to you. It's also good practice to hide the date column in other ones. So here I can hide as well, then it will remove it because otherwise you don't want people choosing the wrong date. So back here, we've done all of these things except the last one now, so disable auto date time. So here I am in a file where I've just taken this and I'm gonna show you what this feature is. So by default, when you are first using Power BI, when you load dates in, you get this, and then you can choose a day hierarchy, year, month, quarter, day, and for example, if I want to do sales by units like this, then it would give me a table that looks like this. And in a chart, it would give it to me in a hierarchy, but I can change it here to be just the date. Now, this is kind of training wheels, because if you have this, then Power BI actually has a hidden date table underneath every time you have a date field, which will mean your model will be really, really big, and you won't be able to standardize how you deal with dates. So it's best to avoid this. And to do that, go to file and then options and settings and options. And then if you go to data load, so you have the global and the current file settings. So in the current file, you can take off auto date time like this, but you can also do it in the global settings and then it will work like that for any new files. Press okay. And then you will see this go away. And that means that these date fields will not really be that usable, but as long as you have your relationships working to your main date table, it will work just fine. All right, so back to this file. Now we've done all of these. Let's look at the later in this video stuff. So inactive relationships, you can have multiple relationships between tables and one of those can be activated only on demand. So let's show you what I mean here. So back in page one, I'm going to say this fruit data where I have expiry date and I have sale date. I'm going to say that I want to see fruits by date over here. And I'm going to do that in a table. And then I'm also going to do another table where I do. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. And then if I change the date that I'm using to, not this one, but the sale date, I'm going to see the same options. But if I copy and paste that again, and then put it over here, and instead of sale date, I'm going to choose expiry date. This is going to be different dates. So this 1800 was not on the 7th of August. It was actually on the 26th of November. So it is a different way to do it. Well, what if you want to hide these columns, which you definitely should, but you want to still activate that relationship. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a measure to do that. Ha, ah, fruits. Sorry about that. Fruits. There we go. So I'm going to create a new measure here, and I'm going to say that I want to have a fruit by expiry date. I need to say equals, and then I use the calculate function. And I talk about the calculate function in another video that I'll link to here, but I'm just going to use it for this purpose. So calculate fruits. And then my filter is going to be this other function called use relationship. What use relationship does is it can activate a relationship that's usually not working, inactive. So if I do expiry date to the date, that's it. It's just got two inputs, which is the relationship column one, relationship column two. And then I press, close my brackets again for calculate, and I press enter. And now, if I do fruits by expiry date, and I sort this, and I sort this second one, then I can see that it is kind of the same, 2100 on the 16th of June. So that has worked. Uh, just a couple more things about this. When you are using calculate, then you have to do a measure in there or something that's pre-aggregated. So if I didn't have this fruits already, uh, and this fruits is the sum of units, I can't just write units in here. It won't give it to me in the drop-down list. I need to first say a sum of units like that. It's best to reuse measures and to have explicit measures. So you probably should have a fruits measure. Measures are ones with the calculator here. But if you don't, then you would do it this way. And then use relationships. This will only work if there is actually a relationship. So if I do it from there to another date, for example, concert date to date, it will not work and it says it can only use two columns referencing references participating in a relationship so actually it will not work in that case so it needs to be the ones that are actually in a relationship and it will give you a big error message if you haven't done it that way so there's use relationship a pretty easy function and has many many use cases particularly for dates all right so let's look at years and we have a table that has years data and targets by year that's not targets by date so if i go here to my model view and let's put the date table at the top now, I have the targets table that I do want to link to the date table to get that to compare against the concert data, but actually I won't be able to do that because here years are not unique values. If I try and drag year to year, it will not work. It will tell me it's many to many, which is definitely not what I want. So I need to end up building a year table, which kind of comes from the date table. 
So how are we going to do that? So I'm going to go back to Power Query. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my date table, but I'm going to have uh, a different query from this one using just here. But just uh, in my opinion, what I tend to do is I like to have my one table that is staging and then that bifurcates rather than just referencing from this one. So I'm going to right click on the last step and I'm going to extract previous. And this is going to be staging date table. Press OK. The staging date table has all of these steps except the last one, but I'm going to right click and untick enable load because I don't need that loading. I'm going to then right click and reference it. So this is going to be my year table. My year table is just going to keep this column because all the other columns are not a year level. I'm going to right click and choose remove other columns. And I'm going to remove rows and remove duplicates. And there it is, there's my year. We can add other columns if we want related to this or if we had other characteristics with each one. But otherwise it's okay just as it is. And then I can press close and apply. So now it's loaded it there and let's fetch my year table over here. I'm actually going to put that above here. I like it when the one side is the highest and then things flow downwards. So I can relate year to year like that. And then in the date table, I can also relate year to year. If I go back to this view, then I can go to year and choose this one from my year table. And then I'm going to say the target sales and the sales. And I can put them side by side like that. So that works pretty well. Then I can make other measures that calculate one compared to the other one, like you would expect usually in Power BI and DAX. So that is how you would create a year table. This kind of thing is known as a bridge table because you're bridging from this table to this table and you're, you're building it in order to make that happen. So here I'm in the query editor and you can get to that by clicking on here, the transform data to load it. I'm going to go to my date table and we'll see how it works. So it starts with this one, and this is using custom code here, where you have to say date from, date dot from, and then you have to write this to say what it's from. It's just something you need to learn how to do and how to memorize this if you want to know how it works. I do also advise right-clicking and choosing properties and putting some instructions in here, and that will create this I that can be clicked on or hovered over. Uh, then uh, end date is a slightly different one. So here I have date end of year and then date dot add years and then date time local now this means the current date time but you can if you want to change this to something else you'd use this kind of syntax then after that we get a day count so this is just um to go from one to the other one the end of date minus the start date plus one to get how many days there are so after that then we get this one which is list dot dates and then you have your start date how many you're going to list that's the day count which is this part and then the duration is going to be one day and then zero hours, minutes, and seconds. So these ones you just have to kind of learn. And then the rest of the stuff is mostly done through the UI. So now I've duplicated the query and I've just got this one. So I'm going to press two table. Okay. And that's a date table. And I'm going to change this to date. And then mark it as a date. It might automatically do that for you, depending on what settings you have. And once you're there in add column, you get all these date ones. So you could say, for example, the year, the month, and then you could say the name of month. And then here I can go to transform and extract only the first three characters. And here I can extract the last two characters. Then I can click on both of these and do add column and then merge column and then choose a dash. And then this will be my month name. Like that. This is usually how I get to doing it. And then just kind of add columns that way, make sure that the data type is recognized well. You will always need something to sort by. So I will need something like this that's numerical. But as I said, I'll give you the code if it's something you're looking for. If you just write a comment and subscribe to my channel. So my name is David and I'm going to have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom Teams. So if you like this kind of stuff, then give it a like button on the video. Thanks for watching.